you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears, where we have a 67 Jeepster convertible in the shop. We've got it torn apart, and we're doing some upgrades on it. Now, if you're not familiar with this project, let me bring you up to speed on it. I basically found this thing sitting in a garage where it had been for decades, and my original plan was to do a motor swap, axle swap, a bunch of cool off-road stuff. So we're talking like a level three or level four resto mod or frame off build. And then we dug a little deeper and found out that this was a first year super rare survivor with only 8,000 original miles on it. Yeah. So that is too rare, too valuable, and just too cool to cut up into a trail rig. There's plenty of rusty commandos out there for that. A much better approach on this kind of vehicle is a level one or level two restoration. So we are in the middle of a level one restoration, which involves get it running and driving safely. And the first thing we did was basically disassemble everything under the hood and clean it up. This involved painting the motor in the original Buick green using some engine paint from POR. And then we also replaced the valve cover gaskets, intake gaskets, thermostat gasket to prevent any leaks and replaced some hoses. Then we bolted in a new fuel pump and took care of some problems down there. And then finally, we upgraded from this old Rochester two barrel to a far superior Weber two barrel setup. And that brings us up to where we are today. I've got a whole table of parts here from the Jeepster man who specializes in original and upgrade parts for all kinds of early Jeep vehicles. So let's get to work, starting with the engine electrical system. Now, obviously, we could just bolt in this old points distributor, but we're not going to do that because we're going to upgrade to this big HEI distributor. Now, there's several reasons for that. First of all, this gets rid of the points. Second of all, it has a much hotter spark. And third, it puts the coil right on top, so it's all in one nice little package. Now, as you can see, there is a considerable size difference in these two distributors, but they've designed this in such a way that this distributor will actually fit in that Oddfire V6 and clear everything. Just barely, but it will clear. To install a distributor, set the number one cylinder on top dead center of the compression stroke. Then slide the distributor in place. Make sure that it seats all the way down so it engages the oil pump. Once it's seated, the rotor should be pointing at the number one spark plug. The next piece is the alternator. And just like the distributor, we could reuse this old original alternator. But remember, there was a fire under the hood of this vehicle, so you know this thing is toasted. Also, it was a five wire hookup, man. That is a pain in the butt. So we're not gonna use that. We're gonna upgrade to a GM style one wire alternator. Now look at that big boy. Now, in spite of the size difference, this will actually bolt right in place of this original alternator. It's gonna give us way more power and it is a single wire hookup. This is one of the best upgrades that you can do to any vehicle to simplify your wiring and get you the power you need. Now, you're probably wondering where I got all of these nice new brackets here. <laughs> I didn't. That's the original brackets just cleaned up and painted with a coat of Rust-Oleum paint. I did the same thing with the valve covers, the thermostat housing, the fan, all of this stuff. As you can see, you don't have to spend a lot of money when you're doing a project like this. Just take the time to clean things up and detail it because when you start putting it all back together, this makes a huge difference. The last electrical component to upgrade is the wiring harness. <laughs> now, as you can see, this original harness is a mess. It not only was it burnt, but if you look closely, you can see that somebody used an old extension cord to wire something up, which is just crazy. No wonder there was a fire under here. So when you have something this bad, you can't fix it. You just need to cut it all out and replace it, which is what we're going to do with this 21 circuit 
customizable harness from Painless. Now this is a universal kit and it's gonna do several things for us. Number one, it's gonna give us a real fuse block, which the original Jeepster did not have. Also, you can see it's got wiring that runs under the hood, in the interior to the back of the vehicle, so that's all laid out for you. And it's 21 circuits, so you can add other accessories and all that other stuff if you want to. The best part, though, is you've got all of these instructions to wire up all of these accessories we're putting in. There's your HEI distributor. It'll have instructions in here for the one wire alternator because remember we're getting rid of all of this stuff voltage regulators ballast resistors all of this and putting on new things so we need to be able to wire that up this is one of the best upgrades you can do for this kind of a project now obviously this needs to go on after all the components are on so we're going to set this aside for now and move on to the next upgrade and that is the cooling system now, you have a couple of options here. You can always try your luck with the original radiator. <laughs> but if the vehicle's been sitting for a long time, you probably want to upgrade it, which is what we're going to do with this all aluminum radiator from Champion. Now, this is a three row high performance radiator that is designed to bolt right in place of that stock radiator. So that's awesome. But we're not just going to do this. We're also going to add a fiberglass fan shroud to make sure the air is pulled through the radiator properly. So you should be using a shroud whether you're keeping the original radiator or not. This will take care of any cooling problems. In a world of economic uncertainty, there will always be a need for quality tools and people who can use them. That's why becoming a Cornwell tool dealer is one of the best career moves you can make. With routes available all across the nation, it's a great way to be your own boss, supply high quality tools to professionals, and make some real money. If you're tired of working for someone else, have the drive to succeed, and want a career that can be successful no matter what happens on Wall Street, there's a Cornwell tool truck with your name on the side. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our Jeepster convertible project, where we're showing you some of the best upgrades that you can do to a vehicle to make it a reliable driver without losing the originality or the value. Now, we're pretty much done under the hood here. Got the fuel system upgraded, the cooling system upgraded, the electrical upgraded. Now we're ready to turn our attention to the suspension and the brakes, because keep in mind, the goal of a level one project is to make it a reliable driver that you can drive anywhere that you want anytime and as you can see this thing <laughs> is a little tired it needs some help fortunately there's a whole bunch of parts from jeepster man over there on the table that's going to take care of these problems now the brakes on any old jeep were questionable at best so we're going to fix all that with this front disc brake conversion for the old jeeps now look at this it includes these massive 12 and a quarter inch rotors. You get the brackets to bolt on the calipers and all the hardware you're gonna need to give you front disc brakes. Now the rear brakes, we're gonna keep the stock brakes, but we're gonna rebuild all of the original drums using all new hardware. And then we also stepped up to these two inch spacers that's gonna widen out the track of that Jeep and fill out those wheel wells better. For suspension, we picked up a two inch lift kit because that's as high as you can go on these early Jeepsters that have that early Ross style steering. Now it includes new leaf springs, front and rear, shackles, U-bolts, and even new shocks. Now what this is gonna do is stiffen up the suspension considerably. It's gonna raise it up and it's gonna get rid of that saggy butt look that we got going back here. Now obviously we need to get this thing in the air, get the wheels off, so we can get to work. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take things apart, starting with the locking hubs. Next comes the hub and drum assembly. Now these will need to be separated because we want to reuse the hub, but not the drum.
Next, remove the six bolts holding the backing plate on and remove the whole brake assembly and put it in the swap meet pile. While you're cleaning things up, make sure you take the time to look for any worn parts because now is the time to replace them. All right, after some much needed cleanup, you can start putting things back together. So on goes the caliper bracket using the supplied spindle bolts, followed by the old hub with newly packed bearings, and then the locking hub assembly. Next comes that massive rotor. And finally, the new caliper and the brake hose. And that's it. That's how simple it is to put disc brakes on the front of an old classic Jeep. Pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. Now, a couple of things. While you're deep in here, now's the time to check your steering linkage, your drag links, your tie rod ends. If they're bad, replace them. If your U-joints are bad, replace them. Change the differential fluid. Fix any leaks because you know you're going to need to. Another thing. Disc brakes work great if they're power assisted. Now remember this Jeep came with the powered brake option, but that old booster shot and so was the master cylinder. So we're gonna replace it with that new one from Jeepster Man so we can get the full benefit out of those disc brakes. Metal, it's one of the key components of what we build and fabricate with. But if you can't shape it and cut it, you can't build with it. For over 50 years, Woodward Fab has been supplying the tools and technical advice to get the job done right. Bead rollers, brakes, shears, tubing benders. You'll find what you need whether you're a professional metal worker or just starting out. Woodward Fab, shaping metal since 1966. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our level one restoration of a 1967 Jeepster convertible. Now, if you're wondering what a level one is, that involves getting something up and running and driving safely and reliably. So it's all mechanical, which makes it much simpler, much easier than like a level three resto mod or a level four and five ground up frame off build. And a level one is the first sort of project that everybody should tackle because you gotta understand this stuff before you can move on to a more advanced project. Now, so far, we've done upgrades on the electrical system, the cooling system, the fuel system, the brakes. Now we're moving on to suspension, and we're gonna put on this two inch lift that we showed you earlier. To replace leaf springs, you'll need to put a jack under the axle for support, and then unbolt the old springs and shocks and toss them in the scrap heap. Then install the new shackles and springs using the original brackets. And the new U-bolts. Follow that up with the shocks. In the rear, it's the same thing. Pull off the old single leaf leaf springs and shocks and replace them with the new multi-leaf springs and gas shocks. It's also a good time to put on our wheel spacers. This is gonna widen out the stance and make those original wheels fit the wheel well better. They're also necessary to get a 15 inch wheel to clear those new front disc brakes. Okay, while you're under here, now is a good time to check and see if there's anything else you need to repair. Now, keep in mind, we're gonna replace this fuel tank, so that's good, but look at this. There's dirt dauber nests all over the back of the rear end and the, down the frame, so that'll all need to be cleaned up. 
Also, as you can see, there's some leaks in the rear end, so we'll have to take care of that. And then if you look forward, there's some leaks in the transmission and the transfer case. So we got to fix those. And then if you look to your right, we found some rust holes in the rockers, which is to be expected. But we're not going to do anything with those right now because that is a level two. And we'll talk about that later. All right, let's get this thing down on the ground, see what we have. OK, with the original tires back on, you can see what a difference this lift makes on this whole Jeepster. It's finally sitting level for probably the first time in 40 years. And now we've got room to put up to a 30 inch tall tire. Yeah. Now you got options here. You can do the original hubcap thing or you can put a custom wheel on anything that you want to do. And options are a good thing with any project. You know, one of the first true freedoms you experience as a kid is that first bicycle. Man, it becomes your transportation to the world, or at least the local neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, man, we all had bikes. And we'd stick playing cards in the spokes, and we'd suck on black licorice, make it look like we were big biker dudes, and it was magic. But a bike wasn't just about transportation. No, it became an extension of your personality. And there were all kinds of bikes out there. There were 10 speeds, there were mountain bikes, there were stingrays, there were BMX bikes, and they all had their strengths and weaknesses. And that's where the idea for the story of the Purple Bicycle came from. Because just like a bike might wish it had the talents or skills of another bike, so do we sometimes overlook our God-given talents and wish we had somebody else's talents, skills, because they seem to be better than ours. It's a simple lesson, but something we all need to be reminded of from time to time. And now, Parts Bin. When it comes to wiring a custom vehicle, man, a lot has changed over the years. With modern computer controlled engines and transmissions and gauges and accessories. And because of that, wiring harnesses have had to evolve as well. For example, this is the Pro Series wiring harness from Painless, and it features a mountable fuse block with 23 circuits, so you got plenty of power. And the wires are all pre routed in sections for under the hood for the interior and, of course, the rear of the vehicle. And all the wiring is extra long, so you've got plenty of wire to cut and route how you need it. The kit is also loaded with factory-style connectors, so you can hook up to virtually any engine, gauge, sending unit, or sensor and make it look like an OEM factory deal. The Pro Series is available with either a grommet or a bulkhead at the firewall, and for either a key on the column or key on the dash configurations. The kit also comes with ground straps and light sockets, connectors, terminals. Man, they even have a package of alternator hookups that are so hard to find. There is no question that the wiring is one of the most important aspects of your build. And with all of the options that you've got out there, choosing the right kit can be a little overwhelming. And that's the purpose of this Pro Series from Painless, to take out the guesswork and get you wired and fired and running down the road. It's a fact that hot rodders like to add stuff to their projects. And most of that stuff needs power to run. A lot of power. Electric steps, fuel pumps, fans, air conditioning, heaters, off-road lights, the list goes on and on. And all of these require a relay to wire them up properly. But instead of going down to your local auto parts store and buying a bunch of generic relays and trying to wire them in, you need to check out these multiple channel relay modules from MSD. This allows you to mount multiple relays in one compact unit. Now check this out. You can see that hookup is very simple. Your main power goes in here. Then this is where your trigger wires go. Everything runs through pre-wired relays. The relays are protected by fuses and of course your power runs out here. The mounting plate is metal, so you get a good solid mounting, and they all come with these covers to protect everything. Now those holes right there have little LED lights 
so you can actually see when each circuit is operating. Of course, this has four, that one has two, and that one has one. So if you want to mount multiple relays in one compact unit, you need to check out the MSD multiple channel relays. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metal working equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Don. He is from California, and his project is a 1963 Buick Electra 225. Yeah, that's a cool project. Now, we said he got this because it's different than other projects. He wanted to do something different, so he traded for this car. He looked at the pictures. It looked good. He saw a couple of panels he'd have to fix, but he thought it was going to be a fairly easy build. Then he said once he got it back, it started revealing more and more. Now look at this. <laughs> you can see it, man. It looks like somebody put the Bondo on with a trowel. Man, that stuff he said was inches thick. So he started cutting things apart. He said he's now in the process of cutting the rust out of the doors, the fenders, the floor pans. He said he just decided to pull it all apart and make sure that the frame is good. Sometimes a vehicle will trick you. Even though you look it over, it'll have some surprises for you. We found some surprises on this. That's why you need to know how to repair all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, Don can do that. He said he's moving forward with the project. He's got an LS he's putting together for it. He's got a 4L60 tranny he's going to put in it. And he says hopefully by next year, he's cooking on this thing, He's going to have it at the rod run, ready to go. Well, hopefully you hit that, man. Great project. Can't wait to see that Buick. And to help you out with that, we're going to give you one of these super bead manual bead rollers from Woodward Fab. As you can see, this has a whole bunch of dies for flanges and beads. It's going to be perfect for making some of those floor panels that you're going to need in that car. Also, we're going to give you one of these deluxe project planning books so you can keep track of everything that you're doing on that Buick. And we're going to give you a gears fender cover so you can protect that car once you get paint on it. Now, we're also going to give you a gift card from Holly so you can get some Holly products for that project. Also, we're going to give you a gift card from Hot Shot Secret so you can check out some of their products. And finally, we're going to give you a copperhead die cast. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, we're out of time for today. And hopefully this inspires you to get out there and get into a level one project if you've never done something before. I promise you, you can do it. And the skills that you're going to learn doing a project like this, man, they are going to last you a lifetime. We'll see you next time.